Welcome back to Junkin' with Junior. We've got a killer pig rig trailer here. So it's a show pig trailer made by Frontier. A really nice trailer. I love these things. They're all aluminum construction, so you don't have to worry about them rotting out or anything. Uh, no wood, no rust, anything like that. Awesome trailers. But it always uh, is fairly basic trailer when you get it. You have to make it how you want it. So a um, few things we got to modify on this, dude. The basic standard tongue layout. They put some diamond plate trim over the tongue, which finishes it off really nice but we've got a power tongue jack well why are we putting a power tongue jack on it well because when we mount the generator on the tongue there's no room for this handle to swing so that's a taller jack anyways and then in case of an emergency that has a or a failure that has um a crank handle in it so but it'll be above the generator so it's still usable we've got a battery we're going to put in this thing because there's no system inside the trailer uh with a battery already from the factory so let's say it's hooked up out in the yard right now or excuse me, unhooked in the yard just like it is, and you need to load up some hogs at night. Turn the lights on, you got nothing because there's no power in the trailer. It has to be hooked to the truck. Well, a friend of mine that I'm working on this trailer for is pulling it with a Ford pickup truck, and you have to have the truck running for it to send 12 volts to the trailer plug. Just doesn't make sense. So we're gonna put a battery in it, so now they don't have to have the truck hooked to it. Anytime they wanna practice loading hogs, load them up, whatever, uh, flip the switch, you got lights. Much simpler setup. Don't have to have the truck hooked up anymore. So, got a battery uh, and battery box. We went with the Odyssey uh, Big Dog Group 27 there. So, uh, way more battery than what we need. But like the owner said, uh, the advantage of that is then if he needs a battery for something else, when they're not using the trailer, he can always pull it out and use it. So, I guess it makes sense to me. Lippert controls, uh, Lippert component, excuse me, tongue jack we're going to put on there. And show you inside some of these projects we've got as well. All right, so that's the generator that we're going to mount on the tongue. Um, it actually runs on gas or propane, and I think it may be a little more convenient just to run it on gas while it's on the tongue and propane as a backup if they ever needed it. And then the battery is going to go up front here where that cord's coiled up, kind of a dead spot on the floor below that inverter box there. So perfect place for it. We can tidy up that cord there and run some wires. Our switches are over here on the wall but like you say nothing so we got to fix that we need to be able to light this thing up anytime you need it to and then in the back of the trailer in the uh, pig palace if you will really nice rig like I say all aluminum construction i love these trailers but uh it's one of those things that i don't think they really thought about it when they build these trailers it's just like oh well this is standard let's do this so this is your standard hog feeder uh hung on this round bar here now that's fine when the hogs are little, you know, but as they get bigger, you need to raise these up because those are down so low, it's harder for the hogs to eat and the shavings get all in them if they ruffle them around with their feet and stuff. So we got some round rod here and we're going to get those cut to length and weld them on here. We're going to go five inches above this existing rod and that'll make it much more practical to have a higher point. And then as the hogs get bigger, they like to take these things and flip them up playing with them. Well, they have chains on the bottom. So now when we move this mounting point up higher, then that chain can hook on here to keep them from flipping them out. So it's going to be a really ideal situation there. So we'll take all these uh, panels off. Uh, looks like we have some half inch bolts here and we can just lift those uh, gates off and then we can weld all this up, put them back on. And then that part will be done. Then we've got the angle aluminum down here. That's what's going to go on our tongue to mount the generator. So we're going to do a basic uh, rectangle shape here. We're going to build it a little bit bigger than the generator itself so that if a bigger generator ever got put on the trailer, you have a little bit of wiggle room. And we can screw it right down through here just like this trim is. And the owner says, well, are you going to put expanded metal or anything on the bottom of the generator mount? I'm like, I don't think so. It's going to have this corner void here. We can always add something if we need to. But for now, we'll get the frame uh, cut to shape, welded up. See how it fits on there, see how the generator sits. And uh, if we need to add something, we can, but I think we're gonna be good with just that. Then we'll put some tie downs on it for some straps, hold that thing nice and secure. So I'm going with a hand screwdriver because Stainless screws, you always got to be careful with power tools. I mean, if you pre-drill them, you should be okay, but I'd rather uh, be on the safe side. And plus, you just get a better feel for it sometimes. Like, there, it's just starting to bite, and it's going through that aluminum floor pan, so it just feels really good. 
So our battery box is mounted to the floor, batteries in the box. Of course, we got the lid we can put on later when we're done, give it a nice finished look inside the trailer here. Nice and clean, but we've got to get some wires ran to and from this battery. So I'm going to wind up drilling a hole in front of this battery panel. There's a little space in front of it here. I don't want to use this one for the outlet here uh, because that has a door that opens to feed this big cord in and out. So we don't want it to be cutting any small wires or anything like that. So let's go underneath the trailer. And let me show you what's going on down there. I back the truck up, plug the trailer in to make sure that everything's working properly and that we know we're hooking to the correct wire. So I got the power probe under here, hooked it on the uh, white and what color was this? They marked the end of these studs. It's weird. One would normally think that red goes to red, but we actually put on the black since there's a red wire there is what I was assuming. So that's our hot wire and this is our negative. And of course, there's no power coming to any of these because we're not committing any other lights to be on right now. So it's a little easier to see with those out of the way. We've got the main red wire here on this post and that comes back around along the frame to this battery pack over here for the trailer brake. So in the event of a disconnection from the truck when you're traveling down the road, it sends power to the brakes, applies brakes, and slows the trailer down and hopefully it's not too big of a deal and you hook back up to it and you're on your way. So this is going to be our ground. Now, the bottom of the box, there's all these wires coming in here. They actually run those in this frame rail, the part of the A-frame for the tongue. So they go inside and then they poke out of the trailer up here and that's what plugs into the truck. So that's really nice and clean the way they did that there. But then there's these wires that come out of the top. Well, all those wires go inside for the trailer wiring for the lights and they actually go inside to that inverter panel as well. So we're not really worried about the top part so much is the bottom is the source of our uh, power. So we know that we need to hook on this uh, power wire and go to the inside of the trailer to the battery. So that's what we're going to do. And then we have power uh, to this junction block. So even when the truck's unhooked, we still have power coming through this box and going to the light switches to work the interior lights in the trailer. So we got some 10 gauge wire fed into this junction box here. Uh, junction box the uh, Oddly enough the one with the black like you say that's going to be our 12 volts And then the white one is going to be our ground So I ran those in this loom that the factory already had here So it's nice and neat and then uh, this actually goes up into an interior wall So it's not an easy access point at all, but our batteries mounted right here. So um, We're probably gonna go just inside here come back from that wall just a little bit and go up through there and then we know we've got a nice clean entrance going up into the floor and then we can hook up our 10 gauge uh, positive negative directly to the battery then we should have lights inside the trailer there's our first two main power and ground wires coming in from the underside of the trailer uh, just got them on there snug because we still got to add two for the jack whenever we get that bolted on so if we did our job right we can come over here and I don't know which one of these but we can flip this switch and we have lights what an amazing concept. Lights without a trailer being hooked up. That's the goal we were after. The only thing that kind of aggravates me about this, um, gosh dang it's hot in here by the way. Um, one light, as nice as these trailers are and as much as they cost, I mean like this is the top of the line trailer. It doesn't get any better than this. One light, nothing else around here. So I think I'm gonna do some looking. Um, it might be a little tricky to put something up here on the ceiling uh, with that already I think it's like uh, outside that panel's bonded on there. So we've only got this channel around the outside here that we can actually mount something. So I'm going to do some looking, see if I can put something uh, either on this panel here, um, on the other side. Got to have some more light in here. That's not much. Matter of fact, let's try it. All right. So we do have some daylight coming in from the window, but that one light there, it's not doing much. Uh, we'd be better... You know, we can tell better at nighttime, but I just think we need to get another light in here because at nighttime when this is completely blocked off, that's just not much light at all. But uh, we'll see if we can improve on that. But for now, we've got one working. Get these three bolts out of here. And this jack won't be used anymore. Just like that. Okay. Instruction slash owner's manual. There's that handle I was telling you all about. So in the event of a uh, malfunction, you can just put this on there and crank it by hand uh, like the jack that was already on there. 
some extra hardware there. And woo, baby, there it is. It's a stout unit too, let me tell you. Really nice quality piece here. So, on, off for our light here. Retract, extend, I like it. Nice sand, standard, uh, you know, three bolt mount there for all tongue jacks. We got an extra, the uh, nice foot, so you don't have to worry about the pipe sinking in the ground. And uh, it comes with a nice 10 gauge wire here, already with the fuse uh, in line, so we can just hook right into that. And we know we won't have any issues. And so I guess as a courtesy, they send you those three bolts there because this is a self grounding unit. So uh, that way these serrated heads under the bolts here uh, will dig in and knock the paint off there so we know we have good ground. All right, drop that in there, just like that. Three bolt holes line up so we can go ahead and put those in, tighten them up and figure out how and where we're gonna run this wire to get it back to the battery. So that fuse 10 gauge wire that came on the jack from the factory, the fuse uh, was kind of in an awkward spot. I wasn't going to be able to route the wire the way I needed to or slash wanted to. So I ended up cutting that off and uh, flipped it around so I could put it inside here. Now we got the fuse that will be tucked away inside the battery case so it's easy to get to whenever we need it. If we need it, wires go down through the floor and let me show you the outside. So the outside looks really nice and clean. I took that wire and put some loom on it. I didn't want to have a bright red unexposed wire just hanging. So uh, I got some loom, heat shrunk the ends of it, tie wrapped it on so it's nice and uh, you know solid connection there. Brought it along the tongue. I didn't want to drill through the coupler or the frame rails. So I ended up opening up this factory eyelet here a little bit for the main uh, trailer you know, power cord lead there and uh, ran it through there, tucked it underneath, went down the frame and back up inside. So it turned out really nice. So, with that being said, let's see if this thing works. Let's start with the LED light. Well, by golly, we got some power, so that's a good sign. I like that. Hit the old extend button. Oh, yeah, that thing's whisper quiet, too. It's not the fastest jack because they do make them low-geared, so you never have to worry about tearing up the internals. But, hey, it's a whole lot better than cranking this heavy thing up all the time. That's, uh, that's like whisper quiet. That's crazy. It's barely louder even with the load on it. That's pretty crazy. That's a really quiet jack. Here it goes. Well, there we go. Got the generator frame welded up. Turned out really nice. It's always nice to start with uh, fresh aluminum like that. It welds really nice. So happy with the way that turned out down here at the shop. Uh, late after work getting this stuff welded up. Going to get those panels out of the truck so we can get that extra bar welded across for the feeders. And it's time to head home and start putting this trailer back together. All right, so we're actually uh, TIG welding all these uh, panels up, the rods on the gate panels. And for those of you that don't know the difference between TIG and uh, MIG welding, MIG's done uh, where the wire feeds through a gun and, uh, you know, melts the metal. TIG, you have a separate torch and you feed the rod in by hand. And uh, I really prefer TIG. It's just so much cleaner. And I think it's a lot better quality weld. And it's interesting because on these uh, trailers that we're working on the Frontier here, um, clearly production's in mind uh, from their point of view. So they've got to get stuff moving down the assembly line to get paid for. But um, it doesn't look as good, and I just don't think it's as nice of a weld. So here's the difference. Uh, there is a MIG weld. It's kind of splattered. You can see the hole there at the end of the weld where the wire was in these rods here. It's just not the greatest. But then, come up here to TIGTOWN. Some pretty decent stuff. I'm not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than the scattered and splattered, you know, MIG stuff that is on there from the factory. 
we are making some progress got the generator installed on the tongue here it's not 100 percent done yet i've still got to drill and bolt it to the tongue of the trailer here but i went ahead and got our uh, d-rings installed there stainless hardware stainless d-rings nothing gonna rust there and um worked out pretty good so we got a strap on each side pulling each direction so that we don't have to worry about it sliding either way but i'm going to pull all this back off and take it back to the shop because i don't have a tig welder here at home but i do at work and i want to tig weld this uh, diamond tread plate to the frame i'm going to do it on the bottom side down here just give it a couple spots down each side so it doesn't rattle and we never have to worry about it you know flying out if they didn't have a generator and it fits in there really snug i don't think it would go anywhere but i'd rather put a little bit of weld on it just uh simple security you know insurance um then we never have to worry about it it'll be solid won't rattle nothing like that and we overbuilt it a little bit remember so if they ever put a bigger generator in the future they've got some room for it a little bit of wiggle room but the way the straps are holds it down nice and solid looks good i'm really happy with the way it's turning out all right so we got a little surprise in the mail these led lights uh finally came in so remember i was telling you inside of the trailer here up in the front compartment We've only got that one light over there and it's not much so we got four of these dudes and i don't know I'm trying to figure out exactly where i'm going to put them uh because the front of the trailer is a, it's a v-nose and then you know your two flat walls down the side i think ideally it's going to be something like this uh up here on the edges because i'm going to keep it close to the edge so i can run the wires along the edges with the wires that the factory already has there because these panels are bonded up so we don't want to drill through that um, we'll just put them around the edge then we can run our wires quick and easy around to the switch and check that off the list Got our four lights stuck up to the ceiling ran the wire around all the way through the you know With the factory wiring that they have up in there kind of wrapped it around it It's already you know there and supported might as well Tied it into this factory light here like I was saying oops got that one a little bit crooked. There we go. That's much better Okay moment of truth Much better holy crap you can actually see yourself in here uh, way better than it was. Huge improvement. So uh, we got the rods mounted on the gates in the panels, uh, you know, in the trailer for the hog feeders. We got our lights done in here. We got the battery down there. Got to put the lid back on it. Went to unhook the test light. Got the excess cord rolled up there so it's out of the way. And out here, generator mount is looking good on the tongue. Golly. Turned out so nice and clean, it's really practical. Um, got the stainless D-rings on here, like I said. The I added this too. These things are like 10 bucks. They come from Optronics. It's one of the coolest little things. So whenever you're storing the trailer and not using it, instead of having this thing dangling down here and it gets filled up with dirt and a rainstorm or anything like that, you just stick it right up in there like that and it's ready to go. So it's not gonna corrode or anything like that. One of the coolest trailer accessories you could ever get. So. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching another episode of Junkie with Junior. Hope you learned something. Maybe it'll help you improve on your trailer, whether it's a livestock trailer, hog trailer, whatever. Um, if you need some basic lights in it, generator mount, there's a few quick and easy tips for you on how to make it a lot better piece than what the factory ever intended it to be. So thanks again for watching Junkie with Junior. We'll see you next time.